Welcome to the Treasury Update Podcast, Coffee Break Sessions, presented by Strategic Treasure. The show where we cover foundational topics and core treasury issues in about the same amount of time it takes you to drink your cup of coffee. I'll be your host, Jonathan, media production specialist here at Strategic Treasure. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. I'm here with Craig Jeffrey to continue our coffee break sessions on CDs, Certificate of Deposits. Today, we're going to talk about what is CD laddering. So, Craig, what is CD laddering? So certificates of deposits are a savings account that have a money tied up in them for a while, but earns tends to earn a higher yield, higher interest rate um, than if you keep it short term in a bank account. Let's say you have quite a bit of liquidity as a, as a company or as an individual. Let, let's just say you have 10 million, for example, you don't need 10 million of liquidity every day and you want to earn a higher return, a, a larger return on those funds and you want it safe in in a bank uh, with FDIC insurance coverage. So what does a what does CD laddering do? It allows you to move out the yield curve. The normal yield curve slopes upward. And what I mean by that is, you know, the old uh, joke about the wimpy burgers, you know, I will gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today where there's a time value of money. So the yield curve tends to slope upward. So if if I have my if I put my money with you and you're the bank and I can pull it any day, you're going to pay me a lower interest rate. If I give it to you and you hold it for a year, I don't have use of it for a year. You do. You're going to pay a higher interest rate. There's an opportunity cost. And so generally, the longer money is held, the longer money is invested, the yield curve should increase because there's a there's a lack. Now, that's not always the case. You know, right now, as we look out, five years, the, the yield curve uh, drops down below that because there's an expectation of lower inflation, uh, lower uh, interest rates by the central banks. And so there's a, the yield curve is not always, you know, normal rolling upward. The reason you would ladder a CD is I don't need all my money right away. I can earn a higher rate if I put money out further. And so instead of saying, I'm going to put all my money, my $10 million out, you know, a year, Maybe every month I start investing some of it. I, I put, you know, let's say I put seven hundred fifty thousand out for twelve months. And I, the next month I do another seven hundred fifty thousand for twelve months, and I keep pushing it out. And so every month I've got this ladder, this uh, sequence of seven hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of CDs. Maybe there's three of them. They're coming due every month, and so I have liquidity each month. And so I'm not shortening that, but I'm gaining the benefit of the longer yield curve. Uh, you know, adding basis points to. Uh, what my yield is. And and if I'm fine with liquidity, then I'm, I'm sacrificing some liquidity for yield. And if that works with, uh, you know, what you need as an individual or company, that can also fit into that environment. So that's really the broad concept of laddering CDs. Okay. That's pretty interesting. Do a lot of companies do that? Um, I wouldn't say a lot of companies do that. There certainly are a number of companies who have extra cash and in certain environments, CDs become you know fairly favorable and they uh, the company can have full diversification to multiple institutions. Uh, they can ensure they have uh, FDIC coverage, you know, uh, insurance coverage or backstop on all those. And so from a safety perspective, um, you know, moderately sophisticated to organizations that don't have, you know, investment professionals will oftentimes uh, do that. And so it tends to be a $500 million firm certainly does that. $100 million firms and below certainly would do those things. Huge, you know, 25 billion, 50 billion multinationals tend not to use CD laddering. It becomes, uh, it, it, can be, it can be cumbersome for them. And they have other options due to size and scale. Is this all, you have to do it manually? Or do do banks offer a laddering system where you can say, I want to put in that, what was it? 10 million. And I want it to, I want every week money coming back after a year. Do they offer that or you have to manually buy each CD on its own? Yeah, I think, I think you have to transact the individual CDs on your own. I'm not aware of anybody that has, you know, plug it in and it automatically calculates a laddering process. Um, but the the level of manual activity to set up accounts varies quite a bit. There's there's different institutions or brokers that offer brokered CDs, which allows you to do the laddering through a single portal as opposed to 
uh, going to multiple banks. Um, when you go to multiple banks, you would go to multiple banks because you want to make sure you have complete safety with you know FDIC insurance, not just the bank guarantee. Um, you'd go to multiple banks for competitive rates because banks have different needs for funds at different times and are willing to pay more or less for that. And so if you only go to one institution, there's no way you're going to get the best rates over time. It's going to, it's going to vary. So the ability to have, you know, competitive rates, competitive shopping is necessary. And there's, there's ways to do that. So, I, you know, I would, I would use the phrase, you know, brokered uh, CDs um, as a way of helping to manage that. So it's, there's still a, you're triggering the activity, uh, but it's managed very easily within a portal as opposed to going to, let's say in the case of the 10 million, let's say I go to 40 institutions to set up accounts because I want full coverage. Now I have 40 times I'm setting up KYC information with the bank, getting yeah. approval and sign on. That is, um, that is a huge deterrent to, you know, any, most companies, if, if, if you had to do it that way. You know, another example of that 10 million is maybe I don't want to start investing 750 out a year each month. Maybe I want to build my ladder right away. So maybe I put 750 at two months, 750 at three months, four months, five months, and, and layer that out. So each month they're maturing and I can use those funds for liquidity. And if, if I don't need it, I push it out a year, year and a half, whatever my liquidity uh, plan is in my, uh, you know, my liquidity horizon uh, requires. So what are some of the risks and downsides of laddering versus just a savings account or just having it in a, a CD for the duration? The main risk of, of, of laddering or putting things in CDs is you don't have as much liquidity. And so you're gaining some yield and giving up liquidity, but that's the trade-off. I mean, that's the, that's the, I'll call it the efficient frontier, which is what people talk about on the, on the stock market, but it's, Risk and reward, yield and liquidity, those two, those two options. Uh, the benefits of, of laddering from a safety perspective, you need to make sure you have safe confidence in, this, in, the, in the safety and security of the particular institution. But if you're also keeping things under the, the limits, so you have full FDIC insurance coverage, now you have not only the bank guarantee, but FDIC insurance. The risks are if you need more liquidity, you're going to have to give up some yield. You'll have to pay some fees, um, maybe loss of interest, um, maybe some penalties. Okay, but laddering is a way to get more liquidity than just a regular CD. Yes, yeah, because you'll have because if you put everything out a year as opposed to every month, now you have liquidity coming due, and if you have a, a peak of need coming in in three months, and okay. I can cover that with what's coming due. If I have to wait a year, now I'm more likely to have to break a CD yeah. uh, to get out of it. Okay. We talked about it a little bit, but what are some of the other considerations you have to keep in mind while you're setting up all those rungs in the CD ladder? If you're setting up a CD ladder and you're doing it all individually, bank by bank, that's really, that's really a lot of work. That's a significant pain. If you're a glutton for punishment, uh, that's a great way to do it. I would, I would say that uh, most people who are doing that are going to take advantage of some of the uh, brokered CD uh, providers. Those would be like Landing Rock, Stonecastle, Fidelity, Vanguard, where you have a single portal, but you can pick the duration, select from different banks because they act as a broker to clear those. So you can have a competitive view from within uh, those uh, different brokered accounts. Um, do they keep they keep some of the profit you would have made? Uh, well, as a brokerage, I mean, because because it's an efficient uh, distribution channel, they do charge uh, some form of fee for managing that. But it's you don't see it. You're looking at competitive rates, and so the let's say the banks that are offering the CDs go through these distributors, and they, you know, they're willing to pay more for them. And so usually you find extremely competitive rates to the brokered CDs. Uh, they tend to pay the brokers more because they're they're tapping a market that's much 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 larger then they might get in there, let's say they're in a particular region or a state and they only have so many people they can draw from. And now they need to, they need more funds. They want more funds. And so they, they're willing to pay up. So, uh, so there is a, there's a cost to everything. It's, uh, but when you're looking at a competitive rate, uh, I'm not sure how much that matters if you're getting a highly competitive rate. Okay. Well, this has been interesting. Thanks for, uh, sharing on CD laddering. My pleasure. And uh, for the rest of our listeners, make sure you tune back every first and third Thursday. 
and we'll get back into some more coffee break sessions. Have a good one. This podcast is provided for informational purposes only, and statements made by Strategic Treasurer LLC on this podcast are not intended as legal, business, consulting, or tax advice. For more information, visit and bookmark strategictreasurer.com.